first items are what I call the name, rank, and serial number items. Okay. How you want your name rendered? You want to be Harriet V. McClellan or Just Harriet, Harriet McClellan. McClellan? Okay. And then we need to know when and where you were born. Uh, I was born in Bloomington, Illinois, but our family lived here uh -huh. um, in 1951, 67 years ago. Birth date? 83051. And you were born in the hospital, not at home? Yeah, probably. St. Joe's yeah. Hospital. Okay. Now, my mom was born in the house I live in. I still have on, a bed, too. On Madison. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know you do. You told me about that. <laughs> where did your, your family, and you can do both sides, but just briefly, where did they come from? How did they get to Central Illinois? Um, <clears throat> on my dad's side of the family, I know that they came through northern Indiana, and um, how far back they were on the East Coast, and when did they come to the United States? Uh, I'm not sure, um, but they were uh, based in Bloomington. Okay. Uh, uh, for oh, at least four generations. Uh, uh, let's see, that would have been my my great 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 grandfather was born in um, I think Virginia but died in Illinois, in Leroy. And um, so where they were from Virginia on, I don't have that much family history. Um, in doing some work, I do know that in the 1600s, um, late 1600s, somebody came over from Liverpool. And uh, so that, on my mom's side of the family, her mother, which was the Hazelmans, or originally Hasselman, um, they settled in Tremont, stayed a little while in Indiana, but came to the States after the Revolutionary War, but I don't know how much before the Civil War. Um, and then my grandfather, Zell, my mom's dad, uh, his uh, grandfather came from Minden, Germany, which was northern Germany, had been Prussia uh, at one time, but Prussia was back and forth on the size. Right. And then in our time, it had been in East Germany, northern East yeah. Germany. So I, I just know Minden. Um. <coughs> It is possible because it, it was um, uh, the Britain part of my family that married into the McClellan, uh, that uh, great-grandmother, um, it was her descendant that came from Liverpool. Um, and it was a noble family. Couldn't tell you the name of the noble family, long since dead, you know. Um, not royalty. Right, you know. but titled. Titled. Uh, but she was the only daughter who married a Briton, and that's where the Briton came through. Uh, and um, uh, but that was you know generations ago. So how did they, the dad side of the family, get to Illinois? I'm not sure. But um, mom side of the family, um, the ones that settled in Tremont, they came from East Coast. The Hasselmans came over and migrated, uh, they came into New York, migrated directly to Indiana, and from Indiana came to uh, uh, the Tremont area. And Tremont at that time was bigger than Morton. Groveland was bigger than Morton. I found in doing some genealogy, um, any uh, buddy that was Mennonite or uh, uh, part of the Apostolic okay. Reform uh, group. Um, the most I found was um, Methodist uh, M.E. Huh. Uh, but most of them were 
some kind of congregationalists uh, uh-huh. and, and, and stuff of that nature. But certainly East Coast, <clears throat> originally. You know? Yeah. Okay. And how did they all, sort of, or maybe it was just your generation, how did they wind up in Morton? Uh, my grandfather <clears throat> came from Tremont in 1908, 1909, and lived at a hotel here on Main Street. And I, and I, I think it was the one that was somewhere near where Old Miller's Bakery was. There was a hotel somewhere in there. And um, then uh, he married uh, Grandma, who was from Tremont, in... Um, Mar- March 7th, 1912, and they moved into the house where I currently live, March 12th, 1909. 1912. Right? The, so a couple, three days after they got married. Is this the grandfather that had the tavern? Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> from what I understand, uh, Grandpa Zell was quite an entrepreneur, and uh, uh, he owned uh, the tavern where Home Instead is right yes. now, and my parents closed it in '50 when uh, he died because they didn't think it was proper to have young children and own a tavern. And um, the bar, uh, the bar, the backdrop to the bar is still in the building. When I remodeled that, I insisted it stay there with the cigarette burns from the bartenders and everything else. Um, and uh, the front bar where the patrons uh, stood up to, they didn't uh-huh. sit at a bar. Right. Um, <clears throat> they, um, uh, that is in my basement, buried, <laughs> you know, and I don't know how I'd ever get it out without chopping it up because it's a good 12 to 16 feet long. Yeah. You know. It came in when they had the old basement doors, you know, the big yes. flip and stuff like that. Yeah. And, um, uh, but uh, uh, he had a bar. Uh, he didn't run it. He had somebody run it for him. Uh, he uh, was the first Buick dealer here in town. Oh. And before that, he sold Pace cars. And Pace was the forerunner to Buick because Mr. Buick worked for Mr. Pace. And left pace and started Buick and there was no more pace you know? and uh, so I've got some of his old ledgers from that and um, uh, his garage the parking lot between the old post office and what used to be the Ben Franklin store yes that that parking lot uh, until I sold it to the city that was where his garage was oh. and I remember the <coughs> building as a child it was a big old two-story white building. It looked like a big barn, really, but had glass windows in the front. And that was where he sold cars from. Um, and then um, when he bought the property, I don't know. I would have to go back and look at records. Um, and then where uh, Binkley Jewelers is right yes. now, uh, that was also Grandpa's building. And... Um, uh, and I still happen to have that one, and it. Um, uh, I know Theo Witzig. That's where his very, very first store was. Was in that building, uh. the very first Witzig. <coughs> you know. Then they moved down the block, yeah. and um, so he just uh, he never had a business in the building. He just bought the building for investment. And whoever owns where Binkley Jewelers is has to own the building where Home Instead is because of the way in the back, you can't see it except for the the alley view, they overlap and the piping runs from one building into another. And uh, they share some of the same. uh, The sump pump for Binkley's is in the basement of Home Instead. Oh. (laughs) Crazy. (coughs) You know. but he just bought and sold that. He had some farms, and I still have one of his his Tremont farm. Um, but he just was an entrepreneur, and uh, I guess pretty savvy in his business dealings. I, I wish I had known him. Uh, he died the year before I was born. Sounds like a fascinating man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
uh, and he was a hunter of renown. Um, I guess he was just not not too much before he died. He won a, a senior citizens champion trap shooting, or, or, or maybe it was skeet. He did both, and uh, he also helped uh, one of the people that helped form uh, Kennel Lake Country Club. Oh yes, <coughs> you know, poor man's country club. Yes. And at that time, they um, uh, he was in charge of setting up the trap shooting and stuff like that. But he died before it got finished, and so that really never took off too well. And uh, where they had that has now all been dismantled. Do you remember <coughs> your anyone from his generation or even from your parents' generation talking about <clears throat> what Morton used to be like? Oh yes, uh, my mom, <coughs> my grandmother's best friend was a Dinah Oswald, and uh, uh, Oswald Park, which is now called Northwoods Park. Oh yes, uh, uh, it was called Oswald Park because they gave the land, right. and that's a s contention with me that when somebody gives land, then they change the name so we can all have woods. Um, uh, but. Um, Grandma Oswald, uh, she was my grandma. Uh, she said, no child grows up without a grandparent. Ah. And she told me a lot of stories. Uh, and my mom told me a lot of stories. A mom would be 100 years old oh. now if she was alive. And down, she remembers downtown Jefferson Street, uh, the in urban tracks running up and down. Um, they had sidewalks, but the streets were dirt. And um, the Oswald boys were characters. Uh, they were uh, teenagers when my mom was maybe upper grade school, junior high, and they were pistols. And I remember viewing a very, very old film of the Oswald boys made of downtown Morton. And it was a storyline. And it started off at where Stump's Pharmacy was, which is now where um, Firehouse Pizza is. It was Stump's Pharmacy and then Village Pharmacy and then uh, the pizza. Um, they had put a cow on the roof oh, during the night. And, you know, the town woke up and here's this poor cow on top of the roof. But there's, in this old, old movie, and I, I assume the Oswalds, some wherever they are um, only one boy stayed here but his children didn't um, the, you can see the four or five boys running down Main Street going um, from like the pharmacy towards uh, Jefferson Street and it's dirt roads and stuff like that and, and I can't remember what the storyline was but it was an old me eight millimeter movie that uh, Grandma brought over, and Dad ran it through his projector. And uh, uh, but um, they were the pistols of the town. What else? What other kinds of stories? What else did you hear about Morton from the old days? Um, <clears throat> that uh, here on Jefferson Street, right across from Homestead, where. Um, Oh, there's a beauty shop there now, and um, the tavern. That had been, uh, the tavern, I think, had been a, 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 a livery stable. And um, then, um, I can't remember what was next, and then Conabare's Drugstore. And, of course, uh, I remember old Mr. Conabare, but I don't remember Doc Conabare. But my mom talked about mm -hmm. him, that he, they weren't really sure if he was a doctor or not, but medical schools were mm -hmm. what they used to be, or are, are now. And, um, but everybody went to him. And people still in town went to old Mr. Conover who ran the drugstore, because he knew so much about medicines, which there weren't that many. And... Um, because it's like, why go to the doctor? We'll just go to, you know, the Conabers. They'll tell us and they'll they'll fix us up. Um, uh, my mom did talk about old Jefferson School, uh, the uh, one that was the white two-story wood yeah. building. And she was attending that school at the time that they built the current building. 
and uh, that was through eighth grade. And then where the junior high is now, that was the high school. And that's where my mom graduated from high school. And of course, it was just the central part, um, just the gym and just a little bit either side of it. And part of the original is still there, but you can't see it because it's been built up around it. Um, but the old Morton, uh, where uh, McClellan Park is now, mm. uh, the funny story about that is no relation. The E and the A are switched. Yeah, sorry that. However, I got to know the great grandson of my mom called him Old Man McClellan. So he, he had to be old for my mom to call him that. And um, I met his great grandson at the Heart of Illinois Fair where I had been superintendent. And he said, Oh, well, we used to spell our name the right way, but this old man McClellan, my mother remembered, was mad at his father, so he switched the E and the A around. <laughs> so, but uh, it's spelled correctly uh, as what it was when he left the land. Um, it, Morton was so small. Uh, I, I've somewhere in my house, I've got an, like an 18, lady, somewhere between 1850 and 1900, uh, a plate book that shows the outline of all of the towns in Tazewell County. And that's how I know Morton was smaller than oh. Tremont and Groveland. And um, uh, the o uh, mom always said the oldest house in town still standing is um, on 2nd Street near the corner of Madison and 2nd. It would be. Um, I know the house where we live, where the grandma and grandpa bought in 1912, they were the third owners. And so, you know, this is the old part of town and where the chamber is, is part of the old yes. part of town. The um, canning factory in the um, was way on the edge of town. Yep. And yes, uh, yeah, way on the edge yeah. of town. And um, as a kid, where Pioneer Sea Company was, that was seemed like it was halfway to Tremont. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I liked the town when it was smaller like that. You knew everybody in this town until Caterpillar came and the town started really growing. I mean, it, as a kid, there was, what, 6,000 people or so in yeah. town? You might not be friends with them, but you knew who they were, or if somebody says, do you, where does so-and-so live? You could give them the right direction. And uh, it just, it was friendly. And um, uh, Mom talked about her good friends. Um, well, a lot of them went to country schools. They didn't come into town until high school. Um, and. Um, she talked a lot about um, one time uh, the Ku Klux Klan was in town. They were having some type of big tent meeting yep. um, out on North Morton Avenue, probably somewhere between 74 and where Cortland Avenue is, probably about Gold's Gym. And uh, our church was real close. The community church was not too far from there. And they came in, interrupted church service, and basically, uh, I don't know, I'm sure they represented quite a feeling of the town, but basically told them to get out of it. That they didn't want to know part of them. And um, the church members told the Ku Klux Klan to Yeah, leave. get out, you know. <clears throat> um, and um, Abraham Lincoln, when he was a circuit writer, came through town and uh, worshiped at the community church. Uh, at that time it was out further on North Main, uh, uh, North uh, Main. And um, uh, he stayed at uh, the Brecker household. And that's on the corner of Harding and Tennessee. Uh, you kind of have a little rise there, yes. and that's where the original house was. And then um, after Grandma and Grandpa Brecker died, they tore that down, and the brick houses on the side is where their kids built. And um, 
Grandma Brecker gave my grandmother a uh, curio stand, and I took a picture of it, that was in the house at the time Lincoln stayed there. And uh, uh, she just was good friends with Grandma and, and gave it to her. And, but Ms., uh, Mrs. Brecker wanted to make sure that um, uh, Grandma, my grandmother knew that Lincoln saw that. Um, so, you know, Morton was part of that. Their mom never could uh, prove it in um, her research. And being a history teacher, she, she loved uh, researching history, um, could never prove. But there was quite a bit of uh, indication that a, a branch of the Underground Railroad came through town and out in that district, the Crandall district. Oh. Um, out there by Tennessee, um, but you know there was no documentation, just you know family lore. Yes. You know, um, but um, I I rem I remember the old Ackerman family. Uh, you know where the house, the big yes. white house yes. is, and. Um, <coughs> These were all old people. I mean, really gray-haired, quite elderly people when I was young. Yes. But, um, and uh, old uh, Noah Zobrist, I uh, remember him, and one of his children is still alive, Doris. She's 95, just turned 95. Goodness. Yeah. Um, uh, she's now Doris Brecker, and uh, lives in one of those houses. She married... The, in, the, in that Brecker yeah. family, and um, and then the uh, old Grandpa Grimm, the patriarch of all of the Grimms, yes. and he little guy, really a sweet little old man, talked uh, with a German accent. And uh, my next door, the neighbors across the street, I could talk to to the husband, and understand him. But I could uh, not talk very well with Lizzie, because uh, she never lost her German, and she didn't really learn English. And what English she learned, it was such a brogue, or not brogue, but a, a, a accent to it that it was, you know, uh, she used to. To me, I thought it was "get to home, you bad tomato," and but I, but that's not what it was. But it sounded like that to me, <laughs> and I'm like. Whatever you said, okay. <laughs> you know? um, uh, but you know, I, I wish I could remember exact stories of um, my mom's era as a child, uh, other than uh, the Oswald boys, you know, running down the street. I mean, that stuck in my mind because I I looked at them going, uh, no. They're old men now, you know. They all fought in World War Two and yeah, stuff like yeah. that, and um, uh, so like, how could they be those rat, rascally teenage yeah. boys? Um, my history of Morton is a lot of what my mom told me, and the I the love of this town, you know. Uh, I wish it wouldn't grow, you know. I really do. Uh, because it's lost some of its charm. It may have lost some of its charm, mm -hmm. but almost everyone we have talked to <coughs> has agreed that it has largely kept its character. It's a town of pretty mm -hmm. good people. Yes. And the question that I have asked in each case is, what do you think accounts for that? I mean, a variety of answers, but there is something about Morton that is that is there's a set of values that have endured it's always been a church town uh, other words people of, of faith different faiths um, and uh, where kids weren't just left to do whatever my parents generation and grandparents generation and hopefully my generation we've tried to t instill into our kids the value of education, the value of good manners, um, the value of uh, uh, 
taking pride in 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 your your family, your history, treating your friends properly, and um, so I think a lot of it, you know, has remained. It's not as strong as it used to be, um, but I would pick Morton before in a lot of any other towns. Um, I mean, this is this is home. This is a community uh, that you really come to love. Um, they see a, a sense of community <coughs> and a, um, a sense of pride uh, without being prideful. Yes. You know, and, um, and it attracts people that that's what they want for their families, yeah. that they don't want the uh, problems of a city. And... Um, and let's face it, Morton has a lot to be proud of. Uh, we do have some industry, uh, so jobs, uh, but we have that value, like you mentioned. Yeah, um, you, you, and so proud of our school district. Yes. You know, it's um, for a quote unquote small town, we've got a lot to be very proud of, of the education that we provide our young people and that's that's going to that's where our tax dollars should go is into the schools because if you have a good school district you're going to attract people yes. who value education and not value um, you know the things that really Aren't, aren't worth anything. Uh, things would be alien to Morton culture. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, Morton has problems. There's drug problem in Morton, but not like other towns or cities. Um, uh, we've got to be proud that um, we've gone from, in my days, one, Pat Ashburn was the only policeman in the whole town. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the jail was round back in, in the lower level and the door was always open to the jail, <laughs> you know, because um, we kids used to go back there oh. to, to, you know, see if there was anybody in there. And, um, uh, you know, we have our EMS system, uh, our fire department, our police department. That town has taken pride. We've spent our money where it should be spent, and that's on its citizens. Yeah. What else do you remember when you were a kid growing up? Think back to grade school and high school. Uh, mm. The old fall festival, which was the precursor to the pumpkin festival. Uh, it was held on Jefferson School grounds, and Libby's uh, canned sweet corn and pumpkin mm -hmm. at, at that period of time. And you could go, and they would have these big, like, horse troughs, brand new, mm -hmm. with boiling water in it, just full of sweet corn. And you would go and um, I don't know if they charged for it or not. I don't ever remember paying for it. They just hand you a, an ear of sweet corn that they had dumped in a big uh, pot of butter and just gave it to you. And um, the Ferris wheel was on Jefferson Street. And um, and we and we didn't close Jefferson. You drove kind of around it. Yeah. Um, but that was always fun. The Pumpkin Festival came to town when I was in high school. And uh, that was, it, it was a lot different than what it is now. And uh, I enjoy the way it is now, but I miss the way it used to be. It was more of a community thing instead okay. of bringing everybody from all over the <coughs> country in. Um, uh, we did not have the sports teams other than, yeah, we had high school and junior high basketball and um, uh, high school football and stuff like that, but there wasn't the, the, all the soccer. Um, uh, the soccer teams and uh, Sundays were reserved for church. Yep. 
and Wednesday, nobody had club meeting nights on Wednesday because that was church night. Um, not all churches met on Wednesday night, but you still, that was church yeah. night. Um, I remember going to church camp with the kids from the Methodist church, our church, um, and I think Washington was part of it, that it wasn't just one denomination. You all went to a church camp. You know, and and it was a blast. But you 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 might not go to the same church, but you were friends with these oh. kids, and um, uh, in some ways, the churches were a little more more liberal than they are now. Um, and um, what, what there was some other things, homecoming. Uh, I even remember watching it as a child. Um, it was so much different in that um, on Thursday night you had uh, the pep rally and that's when they announced the king and queen and then we'd have a snake dance through town. Um, they'd get a pickup truck and they put the new queen and her court in the truck and the freshman attendant would hold the cheerleaders of the freshman cheerleaders' hands, and then all the freshmen would line up behind them, and the sophomore would hold the sophomore attendant's hand, and all. So you'd have four lines, and we would go around town. The truck would just drive real slow, but of course the ones in the back were running, uh, and and you just snake through town, and then you'd go back to the. Um, uh, the field where um, the basket, the baseball uh, diamond is, and the janitors and the fire uh, volunteer firemen would had set up a huge bonfire, absolutely massive, and they'd have the old white Morton fire truck there, and we'd have a bonfire and we'd all run around it and sing the school song and. And that was so much fun. And the game was Friday night. Oh, Friday afternoon was the parade. They got out of school early and had the parade. And um, the, the game was Friday night. And then the dance was Saturday. And, um, uh, and, and, and it's we, watching the homecoming parade this year. Uh, saw somebody that was in my age bracket and we were going remember the snake dance and they're going yeah and the bonfire I mean those sad that we can't do that anymore it would have been late 50s early 60s uh, I graduated <coughs> in 69 but I, re but I remember because my dad was with uh, the school districts uh, at that time we had two school districts uh, and Morton High School was Morton Township High School um, uh, that uh, he usually was the one driving the pickup truck, oh. yeah. and uh, and I remember watching him out my uh, window of the house as they came down Jefferson Street from like the junior high towards Je uh, Jefferson School, and then they would wind around Jefferson Street down Main Street, and I mean they went all over the place, and. Um, uh, You know, kids used to be able to run around uh, the streets. And we'd run up and down the streets. And you'd see a car coming, you quit get over. You know, and then the, whoever was driving the car would wave to you. And um, I remember the old Freidinger Brothers grocery store downtown. I don't remember. Um, it <clears throat> would be about where the bridal shop is now. Yes. Okay, um, and I think I think there's still a couple of Friedinger brothers around, but we're, the old brothers were my were older than my mm -hmm. mom, and um, it was a very narrow store. You walk in and they had one aisle, kind of like Beecham's is in Tremont. You walk down one aisle, neat department in the back where they had the big old butcher block, and then one aisle to come up. And um, Coors Myers is where the Community Church's Fellowship Hall was. 
um, that was the two uh, uh, grocery stores in town. And when Caterpillar went on vacation, this town died. We basically, we always joked about they rolled up the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Caterpillar the last two weeks in July vacation this town was dead nothing went on and um, uh, bars were never allowed open on Sundays at all you know it was a church town um, of course there was only a couple of taverns in town anyway and um, was there any stigma attached to having a tavern in a town that was Pretty conservative? <clears throat> no, no. I didn't think so. Women didn't attend, no. go there. Um, and, um, you know, uh, it was a place to socialize yes. with the gentlemen. Um, my daughter and I each have a table, uh, a euchre table. Oh. It's a solid oak table, <clears throat> and it only can seat four people. And inside each leg is a little box where you could put your drink. Yeah. Because when you play euchre, I guess you slam your fist down on the table. I'm not really sure how to play it. And that came out of my grandfather's mm -hmm. tavern. So it was a place for the men to gather and have fun, kind of like they do when they go down to the different uh, restaurants uh, and have coffee in the no, morning no. and discuss, every, yeah, you know, yeah. solve the world's problems. Yes. You know? <clears throat> and um, so it, it wasn't, you know, was there a town drunk or something like that? I don't recall, but you know, uh, again, we weren't in the tavern business at that time. Uh, from, you know, go ahead. Who, who, who were the sort of the town characters or leaders that you might remember from your time growing up? Um, Chalm Chalmers Arnett, who was with the Savings and Loan, yeah, was the mayor at one time, I believe. Uh, he could have been. <clears throat> Um, old Al Carius, um, uh, grandfather to Coach Carius, uh, who is the f father to the Carius's that yeah. are, you know, um, and he, he'll always, that he'll always be Coach Carius, you know, to yeah. us, I guess he was a junior high coach. Um, Al Carius, um, Fritz Ruling, um, then uh, some of the rap brothers uh, from the uh, pottery, and um, Andy Rap was the only one that I kind of, kind of remember, and um, I knew his widow very very well, and she died at 104. Um, uh, most of you know most of the businessmen in town. Um, Mr. Roker from, um, uh, there was Roker and Dietrich, which is where, um, upscale resale is. Yes. And, uh, then there was the furniture store. Um, and, um, uh, let's see. I remember Ward Grundy. Uh, he was an influential man in town. He was he had taught my mother in school as a young mm -hmm. uh, uh, man, and he was um, uh, principal at Jefferson School when I was there until third grade, uh, when Eliza Ackerman became principal. I had Eliza the last year she taught, which was also the first year she was principal, um, and. Um, Let's see, um, I can't remember his first name, but uh, Doniker was his last name. He was usually on city council or school board. Um, Ray Mason, uh, from about after he came back from World mm -hmm. War II, he came from Atlanta, but he was quite an influential in yes. the town. Um, he was my godfather. Um, But um, I loved going to Roker and Dietrich because the, uh, the main floor still had the wood slat floors that were been worn down, and that was the hardware part of it. And then you went up a back stairway, and that's where he would have the gifts and stuff like that. And got my first Barbie doll there. Ah. 
you know, th that was a big deal, uh, brand new. Um, um, I remember when downtown Morton burnt, because uh, our family was involved in that, uh, where the Butler um, Law Office is. Yes. Uh, that had been um, right on the corner was a very narrow, probably no wider than this office, um, but long little grill. I had the greasiest hamburgers that were delicious. You can get, you know, cherry cokes and chocolate cokes, and you know, kids like to go in there. And next to it was um, uh, the electric store. Uh, shoot, I can I know where they they lived. Caddy Corner, uh, they lived on the corner of uh, First and Madison, and I can't think of their name. Old German couple that didn't have children, uh, but some uh, there was like three stores. The electrical something or other happened, and town was ablaze. We were in Peoria, at the uh, uh, Mohammed Shrine, uh, at a function. And Dad got a call, and he had to just drop everything and leave. And the people who brought uh, my sister and I home, um, Mom went home with Dad, um, we could see from 74, because 74 was brand new then, uh, the flames just shooting way up in the sky. We had to have Peoria uh, and Pekin and there, all kinds of fire departments, and it was freezing cold. Uh, Woodsigs opened up their store and just were handing out socks and gloves to firemen. And um, in the jewelry store, which is it was Walter Gerber's jewelry store at that time, um, uh, uh, oh shoot, Jackson Street, Rokies, uh, uh, they got bread and they got meat from Rokies and on the jewelry counter they they made an assembly line of making sandwiches. Um, Wayne Rokey brought the meat and I don't know where they got the bread and uh, uh, we were down there because there was real possibility of our the buildings across the yeah. street you know and um, uh, making sandwiches the town just pit you know uh, it, you didn't have the Red Cross come in to organize it. The town did it. You know, the business owners in that area and uh, the ministers in town come along and say, what can we do to help you? You know, uh, it's like what's this running out of gloves and socks and people would bring stuff from their home uh, for the firemen. Um, not just the Morton firemen, but all the ones because uh, a lot of those buildings on Main Street were all wood. Uh, or partially wood, and um, it w w you know they were lucky that they kept it to just that area that burnt. So that would have been that <clears throat> that block from Butler down to. Yeah, it was like <coughs> three or four stores uh, or businesses yeah. that burnt. Um, uh, so it was right there on the corner of Jefferson and, and Maine. So it would have been down to that brick building where Miller's Bakery was. It didn't burn all that way down. Yeah. Okay, it but, didn't, but, but it yeah. would have been that first half of that block. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that would explain why when I moved here, that was piece a of park. land was, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just empty. Mm -hmm. And of course, <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, the kids, we were, we were sad because our little greasy hamburger joint yes. was gone. Uh -huh. And everybody thought that's where the fire started, but it didn't. It started uh, 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 electrical short in uh -huh. one of the other buildings. Uh -huh. uh, there's pictures, and I know I've got some, of the ice that was just on all of it, on everything downtown. It, 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 I mean, it burned for hours and hours. But uh, it was, it was, it was something else made your heart, you know, especially when you're coming into town, you see, and it looked like the whole downtown yeah. because, I mean, the flames were huge. I think there had been another fire, had there not, way back 
win some time of a serious fire in downtown Morton, or am I mistaken about that? <coughs> Uh, e, that was after, and that's when the Civic Building burnt, okay. where uh, it was then the parking lot there right across from um, FJT Office Supply, uh, that parking lot area. And that had been built, I'm not sure when, it was a needle red brick building. Um, the upstairs had a stage and a big dance floor. And uh, I know I took tap dancing lessons there. And we used to have youth dances in there. Um, we had an organization called MYCCA, uh, Morton Youth Council on Civic Affairs. And uh, we met there, and that's where we would have our dances and our meetings and until it burnt. I was in high school, um, a junior in high school, I think, when it burnt. And um, that, that, again, was nighttime. And um, I don't think we had to call in other fire districts because there was enough space yeah. that uh, other buildings, I mean, that was right next door to Homestead, so we were yeah. called in for that yeah. one, you know, to make sure the property was okay. But I don't remember, you know, uh, the passing out of socks or anything, yeah. but it was wintertime also. Yeah. Um, but that's the... Uh, only fires until the last few years when we had a Morton um, uh, oh down there on Jackson Street burnt and stuff like that. that oh right, the yeah yeah the lumber company. Uh huh. <coughs> so um, you know those are the only two downtown uh, fires of the business district that I remember, and I don't recall my mother talking about any. Now, when we remodeled Home Instead, uh, from the, when it was a beauty shop, we took it down to studs. Yes. And, um, or took off a lot of the old no. stuff. And we found that there had been fire damage in that building. Um, and you could tell where the old fire wood stove was and, uh, because it was just charring right there mm. in the corner, you know. Mm. And it was kind of... The way it was shaped, you yep. and, and and the pipe went up, yes. and um, so uh, there's charring underneath there now, um, but uh, it never burnt down to the ground that I know of, and of course um, uh, the fire alarm was just um, on the old water tower, oh. and that was loud, and um, our volunteer fire department. There wasn't the joys of the modern day uh, electronics, no. uh, and so the fire siren would go off. And um, if it was a test, it would just go on and off. But if it was a fire, it would go and it would go and go, and it would keep going until they had enough firemen there. And it was they didn't have lights in their cars as when I was a kid. They eventually got little blue lights, but it was you knew that the fire sirens going off, just get off the street, pull off to the side because cars from all different directions are going to just be barreling it down to the fire department. And anybody who's speeding was on oh, firemen. Yeah. You told me once <clears throat> a little bit about your career, and I've kind of forgotten, but you graduated from high school and you went off to college. Mm -hmm. Where did you go? I went several places. Uh, Illinois Central College, uh, Bradley, and U of I. And then um, I, uh, in my late 30s, early 40s, I went back to school and uh, graduated from uh, Methodist College of Nursing. Well, at that time, it was just Methodist School of Nursing. I thought you told me you'd been a nurse. Mm -hmm. And then you did you finish out your career in nursing? Yes. Yeah, the last 20-some years, I was a registered nurse. Um, I was the lead nurse at Methodist Hospital for the main OR. So, I'm a blood and guts girl. Well, that would have been a good time to get your surgery when <laughs> you were there. <clears throat> I was in surgery with my own daughter, so. Oh, I remember you telling me that once. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, I took my do my sister into surgery, but that was not going to be a good one, and mm. I just couldn't do it. To say she had a malignant brain tumor, oh. so. Um, 
but oh yeah. But I, my dad, when he lived in McLean in Bloomington, had been county coroner for McLean County, oh. and so I grew up on. Tell me the story about this dad and that, you know. So, but uh, um, mom was a school teacher here at uh, Jefferson School. Uh, my sister taught school at uh, Schramm Educational Center in Pekin. My daughter taught at Grundy School. She's now at Jefferson. And my dad, when he moved to Morton, um, managed mom's property, which had been grandpa's, but he was in charge of the school buses for both school districts for 25, 30 years, somewhere in there. So, uh, this, you know, uh, I remember the first time Morton got a fire truck where the driver sat over the wheel that dad had to go and help them learn how to drive that because he had the only school bus that had the snub nose, which we uh, have a lot of them yes. now, but he, there was only one, yeah. and he was the only one that drove that bus. And so it's a different turning corners and stuff like that. So he he would take them out, and that was fun for him to drive the old fire truck or the uh, big hook and ladder and the, that sat over the wheels. That is a very rich history of, of Morton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a hook and ladder before Peoria did. Uh, Rex Robinson uh, lived here in town and he was the head engineer of all of Caterpillar. I mean, he um, he ended his career uh, at the Proving Grounds uh, a as he got older, but he was numero uno engineer for Caterpillar. Um, um, oh, shoot. I want to say Flutterer, but that's not right. That Flutterer was the one that ran the Morton uh, newspaper, and we had a good little newspaper, Tassel County News. I love that newspaper. It came out once a week, but it had all kinds of Morton news in it. Uh, and it wasn't like it then changed to and had international stuff that, well, it came out once a week, so it's old news. You yeah. know. Um, but, oh, um, they lived on Madison and Fifth, big uh, brown house. Um, I'll think of the last name. Uh, he graduated with my mom from high school. He started CEFQ out oh. of his lunchbox uh, at Caterpillar. He worked at Caterpillar, and he, uh, uh, neat guy. Um, Lynn Ray, his daughter, still lives here in town. Um, Walt, uh, her name's Lynn Walters, but that's not her ma maiden name. But anyway, he started CEFQ by somebody didn't have money for lunch or wanted to buy a drink, and he would lend them money, and they'd pay it back. Or, he, you know, but he, all of that, and then it built, and it built, and it built, uh, and that was the beginning of CEFQ. From a Morton, uh, nineteen class of nineteen thirty six, gentleman from Morton, uh, and of course we had the Rapp brothers, and the Morton Pottery, and um, I remember Mom saying that when uh, King George the sixth, you know the Queen's uh, the King's speech yes. thing, uh, and his wife visited the United States pre World War Two, uh, trying to get the United States to back England that they were given a gift and it was a gold horse kind of standing up, you know, like it was on its hind legs, made at the Morton Pottery. Um, Mom had one and she goes, I've got the same thing that they gave the King and Queen of England. And I'm like, something from Morton that Pottery. That is fascinating. Yeah. And somewhere in my house I have that horse, but I don't know where it <coughs> is. Um, but, uh, the Morton Pottery was very well known. You know, not expensive items, uh, but very well made. You know, um, uh, the old Cliffwood restaurant, which is where the Chinese place is yes. now, 
that was a, a good place to go. And then Club 150, which is where Schooners is now. Yes. That was a good place to eat. <coughs> you know, um, going to Peoria was an all-day trip. You know, you only had 150 to go on as a kid. Um, and you, you plan it for the day. Um, and like I said, Pioneer Sea Company, that was like going to halfway to Tremont. I remember when the high school was new, um, there was a picture taken Oh, when they had the open house, grand opening. I was not that old, maybe four years old or so, and happened to be mom, dad, and my sister and I coming out the front door. And that was the front of the uh, front page of the uh, Morton Times. So mom kept that, and um, they built the addition and the new cafeteria and the girls' gym over the summer of '65 uh, because I graduated eighth grade '65, started fall '65 at high school, and was the first class to use that girls' gym, which buckled. And so for the most of the first year. You'd walk into the girls' gym and you had to walk around this big, the whole floor was just buckled. I mean, way high. <laughs> and, um, but um, I remember going to the high school, the old cafeteria, which is where the counseling offices are now. And um, you lined up outside and came in and then you'd walk, work your way around and they would give um, polio vaccine on sugar cubes. Yes. Uh, uh, because of the polio vaccine had come out and that was yeah. a big deal. And um, and that was done at, uh, up at the high school. Um, the, the community, when we had things to do, the schools really played a big part in it that by opening their doors. And, um, but, um, you know, the bad kids in school were the uh, high schoolers that maybe went across the street and smoked. They were the bad kids. And um, uh, it, people were more tolerant. I remember riding in a 65 Mustang up sitting on the back, up on the hood, uh, or the or the fold down. Yes. The, and uh, we'd gone out for lunch. We could still go out for oh. lunch at that time. And we were all laughing. I wasn't the only one sitting up there. There was probably seven or eight of us in this Ford Mustang. And um, uh, and police drove by, and they just looked at us and said, sit down. <laughs> you know, and then they went on. You know, Nowadays, they, you would been, be, be pulled over and this and that, but we sat down. Nowadays, they'd be like, yeah, right. You know, so. Um, but... Uh, there used to be three pancake and sausage dinners, not breakfasts. Uh, the uh, Kennel Lake, the Masonic Lodge, and the Community Church. They went in together and bought um, griddles. And those have been some of the griddles that the Pumpkin Festival has borrowed mm -hmm. over the years. And they each bought a griddle. And they would take turns. Whoever had the... Uh, pancake and sausage in January the next year would have it in March and they would rotate around who got to be first who was in the middle and who was last and they just you know shared the the griddles and uh, and so everybody just kind of worked together and uh, that was a big deal uh, and it, uh, people would come out for those because we didn't have the the other than Club 150 and and um uh, oh, I just mentioned the name. Where the Cliffwood. China, Cliffwood. You didn't have places to eat here in town. Um, in high school, we had Vince's Pizza, and that was about it for the kids because our favorite little greasy spot uh, um, burnt until they uh, made uh, McBurger, which is the defunct tavern out by Field Shopping Center. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, I don't even Vince's Pizza was about the only place in town uh, to get pizza at that time that I recall 
he was straight from Italy. And um, so when churches, didn't matter if you went to church or not, had a dinner and it opened to the public, everybody came. Oh. You know, uh, chili suppers. Uh, it was it was just a big community. So, what do you think has been the most significant change in Morton in your lifetime? In my lifetime, the size. We can't burn our leaves, so we don't have that wonderful smell anymore in town. Um, knowing everybody. Um, when I was watching the homecoming parade this year, I used to know at least who they were or recognized everybody that would be watching. And there was only a handful of people I recognized or even knew who they were. And that, that was really kind of a, oh, you know, I've been here all my life. You know, yeah, I moved away for 10 years or so, but I was just in Peoria and Pekin. Oh. Um, and it, it's like, I, I miss at least being able to just walk down the street and say, hi, how are you? And you knew who you were saying hi to. Yeah. You might not know them well, but you knew who they were. Um, and the Pumpkin Festival. And I know I'm here in the chamber office, um, and, it, and it's a wonderful Pumpkin Festival. Uh, wouldn't miss it. We'll never miss a Pumpkin Fest. But I miss that it it's gotten too big. It's gotten way too big. The, the, the joy has gone out of it. You, um, this, uh, this year I got pumpkin ice cream for the first time in three years because I couldn't stand in the lines. Uh -huh. you know, I had done some damage to my body and I couldn't stand in lines. And um, uh, thank goodness for the drive through because I couldn't do the lines, yeah, and um, it, it's just, it's gotten too big, too big. Um, mm -hmm. Thinking about the biggest change, what, what do you envision for Morton in the future? I mean, we're going down 10 years. I, s I believe that this community <coughs> will still put a big value on education. Uh, I hope that never changes. Um, I'm seeing a trend in Morton. Yeah, we had some families that economically were maybe struggling a bit um, versus those that weren't struggling whatsoever. But I'm, we're seeing more and more now in uh, people in economic troubles in this town. Oh. Um, in in uh, doing like uh, uh, angel trees for Christmas and going either through We Care or the school district, um, I think it was uh, two, two, three years ago, uh, just at the junior high and just for our church, we got the names of 40 families from just the junior high that they, they knew would not have a Christmas. Really? Mm-hmm. And that didn't count the ones we got from um, We Care. Hmm. You know, and um, this year we couldn't even take on from the school districts. We d it just took from We Care. And uh, I think it, when we loaded up the presents, we had 11 carfuls of the presents to take to We Care. And, 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 and that's sad, but that's part of the economic times. And I, I, I think this community will, s and I hope this community still has that wonderful, caring heart to help our neighbors and um, um, I can see that this town will still have pride in um, in its community 
in, in the public services that they provide, like our fire department, right. our police department, our EMS, or I should say paramedics. Um, what town this size has 24-7, two paramedics, you know, um, ambulances. Um, that's, that to me is important. Bringing industry into town, that's not important to me. The people that live here, that's what's important and that's what I hope will continue. That, um, that sense of we belong and, and I really think it will uh, because the people that do move in here they move in here because Morton just seems like the right place the right fit and they're looking for a hometown they're not looking for a place to live You know, there's so many things I remember uh, when there was no 74 to where it ended at Deer Creek. I remember when in high school, and he continued to post high school, uh, a young man from my sister's class, and who then came back to Morton and taught Spanish, used to work with the, the migrant workers at Libby's to teach them English. You know, and that was community service. That was because that's the type of town we are. Let's help, help, uh, even though they were here temporarily. Um, that, that was Steve Russell. That's what I thought that you were going to say. Fabulous uh, teacher. <clears throat> He's retired now. Um, I just love that we're in a neighborhood. And of course, I would never move where I live from. Uh, when my mom died, it was like, I'll rent out my house. I'm moving to the homestead, you know. Um, and that, that house will go to my child and hopefully go to her grandchildren. Uh, um, but we have so many wonderful people in this town that care. And that's, that's what I remember the most, is lifelong friends that I'll always have. Uh, and you can't make them if you live in a big city. And with that, I think we will say thank you very much, Harriet McCall. You're welcome. I do uh, actually have a couple questions that okay, I could I to clarify beyond that. Um, I wanted to make sure I captured your grandfather's first and last name. Harry. Harry. Fillmore. Fillmore. Zell. Zell, okay. And what are the properties that he owned? That uh, um, where the parking lot is now, um, between the post, the old post office, the village uh, mm -hmm. building, mm -hmm. and what had been the Ben Franklin. That's okay. where he had his uh, uh, auto garage. Okay. I, I've sold that property to the village. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, where Home Instead is mm -hmm. at... Uh, what is that? One hundred and four Jefferson. I think it's one hundred and one. One hundred and one. Oh, Binkley. Ju uh, yeah. uh, Binkley's is on Main. Yeah. And that one of them is like one hundred and one's like one hundred and four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I always get the numbers mixed up. Mm -hmm. Um. And uh, we still have those buildings. Okay. Um, and then um, the house that they built or that they moved into and we've added on to is on the corner of Madison and Second. Okay. Oh, um, and that was my grandfather's, uh, grandparents' house. Cool. Okay. And I'd have to look at the old deed to find out who they bought it from and who they had bought it from and, <laughs> you know. And the Home Instead building, I'm tr I've been trying to put together some of its history. So before mm -hmm. Home Instead, it was a salon? beauty salon okay and before that it was a Jenny tavern? Lee's Jenny Lee's um, dress shop okay bridal store okay and before that it was a Silco okay that's where you went down to pay your Silco bill oh. your Silco okay. um, and then and then before Silco it was the tavern and it had been a tavern when my grandfather bought it what was the name of the tavern? Do you remember? 
I'd have to go look on Sorry. stuff. I, uh, again, since my parents disbanded the tavern, I, I don't And I don't it was remember. a bank, it, it was initially a that bank, right? Is that the Not same my building. Oh. Okay. My building's the one that's on Jefferson. Okay. The, <gasps> okay. Okay, the bank faces Main Street. I see. And I remember that bank. Okay. Uh, I was a kid when they built the one uh, where PNC is now. And, um, uh, okay. And, and that was, you walk in, it was narrow. And um, now we have built a, 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 you can walk from, my building into the old bank building. Okay. Yep. Oh, got it. You know. Okay. And, which is basically where the safe was, because the walls are oh. super, super thick. Okay. Got it. Yeah. I was trying to put together the history of the bank building too. So okay, I didn't realize mm -hmm. there were two different properties then. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Yeah. That's helpful. Um, but if you go into a, a, a basement, you can look right into their basement. <laughs> You know, there's a hole about so big, oh. you know. Um, mm -hmm. Then, now, the um, jewelry store next door, the basement of that is really neat. Mm -hmm. It is boulders. Really? Not brick. It's boulders. Some of them are so big. Some of them are so big. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Locally sourced, do you think? Probably. Morton mm -hmm. is built over a lake. Okay. Yeah. You know, and that's what, and that's why the pottery was so good here because there was a lot of clay yeah. and a certain kind of clay. Yeah, and that's mm -hmm. what gives us the high water table too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's helpful. So. Okay, well, it's a pleasure. Right. Yeah.